Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I know we were supposed to get to this a long time ago while we're in Florida, but here we are. We're here now. Um, for those that have kind of lost track of the series, what I'm doing here is I kind of want to go over some of the surge protection, lightning protection, EMP protection, whatever you want to call it, available uh, in the solar industry, if you will. Um, there's a lot of stuff available. You can go to your local electrical supply house and ask them for a square D whole house that goes right in the breaker box. It looks just like a breaker. Um, there's a Cytel one that goes on the side. It goes in. There's a lot of those. Uh, pretty much every one of those is just like the Midnight where it uses the metal oxide vristers, MOVs. They all basically do exactly the same thing. And it all boils down to how much MOV they have and how good they are or how high the voltage the MOV conducts that. So what we wanted to do with this was to kind of explain to you what we're trying to accomplish with this product, explain to you how each one of these products does that, and then this particular one here, this EMP shield one, has always intrigued me because like, first of all, an EMP, as we've talked about in our previous videos, and we'll try to link those down here, um, it's kind of, uh, it's a nuclear blast that basically sends a shockwave, electrical shockwave through the atmosphere. And what I find intriguing about these guys is that they, uh, intriguing is the wrong word. Um, what I find infuriating, I guess, maybe is the right word for me personally, is that this particular one here is a DC EMP shield. If you go on their website and you say, I have a generator that I want to protect from an EMP, they will tell you to buy this one, hook the red to the red on the battery, the black to the black on the battery, and the green to the frame of the generator, and that's going to protect your generator from an EMP. But guess what? There's another whole half of that generator that's got an AC alternator on there that's spinning, making AC to power your loads. If you have an EMP, that alternator is going to pull in that energy as well and burn up the alternator, burn up the voltage regulator, a lot of that stuff. So it really, to me, it's false advertising. Um, whether it will protect you from an EMP or not, I have no idea. What I disagree with is um, some of the stuff they tell you that it will do when I know electrically that won't work. Like it may save the battery from an EMP, but it's not gonna save the generator. Um, but our goal here is to show you how these work, kind of debunk a couple myths, um, give you a couple warnings, and talk about pricing and, and you know value and, and, and stuff like that. So the first thing I want to you know, really explain here is what does a surge arrestor do? What is our goal? So everybody is familiar with the, uh, the plug in the US. The, uh, you know, the ground is the round one down bottom and then you got the two flat prongs. The wide flat prong is your uh, neutral, the narrow one is your hot. That way you can't reverse them if you've got an old metal lamp and you know, blah, blah, blah. So what our goal here is, if I put say 5,000 volts on this pin, and ground on this pin, so I had a 5,000 volt delta between these two pins, this power supply is gonna go up in smoke, completely up in smoke. If I take all three pins and apply 10,000 volts to them simultaneously, power supply doesn't give two craps because everything inside it is at zero volts to, each, to any other reference. The whole thing is at 10,000 volts, but it's 10,000 volts to itself. There's no, no differential there, if you will. It's the differential that jumps the gap and burns things up or burns parts up. So that's the key to remember here is what we're trying to do is to keep everything at the same potential. We're trying to clamp the, the hot and the neutral down to the ground. We're not necessarily trying to shunt that whole surge into the ground. We're just trying to keep the whole building at a stable voltage. Like if every wire in this building goes to 10,000 volts, as long as it's 10,000 volts on everything, even the ground, nothing gets damaged. If there's zero volts on the ground and 10,000 on one of your leads, everything fries. So that's our goal. So keeping that in mind, the, the snake oil in the room that I, maybe snake oil is a harsh word, um, but I, I invite anybody from Delta to come sit down with me on video and explain to me why I'm wrong. Um, this here, when I started in the solar industry, I was buying these by the cases. I was putting these everywhere. I was fat and happy that I was protecting my customer's system. And I got a call one day from a customer who had a lightning strike nearby and this had blown open and sand had fallen out. And that's when we got to looking at it. And uh, all this is is a spark gap. There is literally, and you'll see, we're gonna cut these all apart in the next video, but there's literally three metal prongs in a ceramic disc in there encased in sand. 
And the spacing on those gaps is going to require about 8,000 volts, maybe 10,000 volts to jump the gap. So if something happens and you've got a, you know, seven, 8,000 volt surge on one leg, it's not going anywhere because it doesn't jump the gap. So that's the real snake oil, if you will, for me. Um, these guys, I have no idea. I suspect it's a quality product. I think that they maybe are um, doing a little scare tactics in their marketing and it's extremely expensive. Um, you're probably looking at 80-ish bucks for this. You're probably looking at about 100 bucks for this on the street and you're looking at about $350 for this on the street. So I did print out their data sheets and the, the Delta arrestor here, um, actually I was wrong. You're looking at like $42 street price for that. So, but you can go to the beach and get some sand cheaper than that. Um, they go on, they're, they're very good at their marketing. They talk about this is silica based so that it acts quickly. And you know, they, they talk about that. They don't really talk anywhere about what it can do. You know, how much it can handle. They say it can handle 60,000 amps. That's really all they say. They don't talk about, you know, the surge ability or anything like that. The, uh, the midnight, if you look at that one, you know, they, you come down here, they're talking about 80,000 volts per phase to ground is their, you know, uh, surge current per phase. And if we look at the EMP shield on the side here, they're claiming about 105,000 amps. So they're, what is that, 20% stronger than the midnight in theory? Um, those numbers are semi relevant, but semi not relevant too. Well, you know, it's a, it really boils down to a lot of different variables in the system. The one kudos I'll give the EMP shield and we're going to, we're going to find out if it's really kudos, but their AC surge arrestor has a L1 for your hot leg one, an L2 for your hot leg two and a neutral. Uh, one of the things that I've stressed a lot is that you need to protect the neutral. That breaker panel over there, you guys probably can't see, but that breaker panel over there is a sub panel out here in the shop. It's got about a hundred feet of wire feeding it. And that neutral in that breaker panel basically is a separate conductor when there's a bad surge because of the resistance in the wire back to the neutral to ground bond. So if I put just one midnight on there, for example, I've done my L1, my L2 and my ground. Now remember what I said about all three prongs being the same? I've ignored my neutral prong. And if we take a really bad lightning strike, that neutral out here in this area is gonna rise way up in voltage. And now I have a delta between my neutral and my hot and I'm gonna burn equipment up. So you really want a couple of these to protect the neutral, you know, and be, and be safe there if you're in a sub panel. So that being all said, I'm gonna go ahead and put all that away. I'm gonna get off my soapbox and I'm gonna explain to you what we're doing here. I'm not actually on a soapbox, I'm on a stool, but we have a 12 volt electric fencer that's capable of about 10,000 volts. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook up one of these at a time and show you what they do, basically. What I expect to happen, just to be perfectly clear, um, I expect the midnight to basically settle in and not see the needle move at all. Because when it tries to hit the midnight with 10,000 volts, it's gonna clamp. This thing's gonna just, you know, not be able to do anything. I expect the EMP, yeah, the EMP shield to do the same thing. I expect that to clamp and not let it do anything. I will be interested to see if the neutral actually conducts to ground at all. You know, if that actually clamps, which if it does, that means they have more equipment in there. And then on this one, I don't expect anything to happen. What I do expect, because this is 10,000 volts, the spacing in here is about 8,000 volts. So I expect every now and then you'll see it stay down at zero because it will spark across the gap. But I also suspect that you'll see a lot of them. It will just hit the whole 10,000 volts every time it ticks. And this is going to not do anything about it. So let's go ahead and set up with this guy. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get hooked up. And I'll bring you back when I get the display ready to go. And this thing charges up a couple times and then it'll start ticking the fence. So now it's ticking the fence. And it is holding it down at the moment. There you go. See, it popped up to 10. So this is kind of what I would expect because the gap in there is such that uh, about 8,000 volts should conduct across. So you'll notice that every every now and then it just dump across. Other times it holds it back. So that's 
This, I know this is very unscientific, but what I'm trying to show you is that it is allowing 10,000 volts through um, quite often. So now let's do the midnight. And this is the midnight 300 AC, just to be clear. The 300 AC and DC are the same. They just light the LEDs different. Um, these have LED indicators that tell you they're working. These do as well. Those do not. So now we're going to hook this up. I'd expect it to charge up, but then I'd expect it to tick and never come off the zero mark. So it's charged up. Now it should drop down. And you can, if I'm really quiet, you can hear it ticking. And you can see the needle doesn't even twitch when it ticks. So that's conducting and holding that voltage down to a really safe level for all your equipment. And expect the same thing we saw on the midnight. It's going to charge up and then when it goes to ticking the fence, it's going to drop down and not wiggle at all. And if I'm quiet, you can hear the tick. Okay, so now let's hook the neutral up. Okay, so you may hear the ticking in there, but you can see it's doing the same thing. So that tells me, kudos to EMP Shield, they are actually protecting the neutral. So that's a good thing. Uh, like I said, that definitely makes it the, uh, a little bit easier pill to swallow if you're doing a whole house install because this covers all three legs, whereas the midnight you would need two, but the cost is about four times, well, maybe three times the cost of a midnight. So essentially, my goal there was to really just kind of show you that... Um, you know, what we're trying to do to accomplish, to protect something, I'm trying to kind of debunk some of the myths about like this thing being this great surge arrestor. Um, you saw it bouncing to 10,000 volts quite frequently. That's, that's letting that delta through to your equipment. That means that on this device right here, I would have had 10,000 volts delta between these two. And for those that don't um, know, when I say delta, that's a differential. So D for delta, it's a phonetics, but that's a differential of the voltage between the two pins. So if this was hooked up to that, you know, if I did something really crazy, like, you know, hooked that up to that and, and that up to that, and then I hooked it up to the fence charger, I'd probably blow out my power supply. But I'd feel very confident putting it on the EMP shield of the midnight that I would not blow up my power supply. So, you know, what I'm trying to say in this one is just don't even go here. Don't even waste your money on this because you might as well just stick three wires in the air and evenly space them, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, you know, spend your money on something like a midnight EMP shield if that makes you happy or, you know, a square D or something like that. It has good conductivity. Um, look at the specs, you know, look at the, when you're looking at something like this, there's a uh, surge current per phase, 80,000 amps. That's kind of what you're looking for is that, that surge current per phase. The other thing you're looking for is clamping voltage. So you'll see here the Midnight SPD300 clamps at 470 volts. If I look at the EMP shield, and I can't read upside down, I apologize for that. This one, this one clamps at 270 volts. So this clamps a little lower. That's actually a little surprising to me that it's that low. Um, that, you know, I'd be a little nervous it might conduct under normal conditions on a high line voltage. This has what they claim is a nanosecond response. I don't think Midnight actually gives a, um, a rating because at the end of the day, it's the MOVs that conduct and it takes a, a period of time. This is a microsecond. I don't know the difference between a micro and a nano. It's both really fast. I really doubt either one would catch a uh, the, the EMP from the, you know, the near zone. You have the three zones of the EMP, and if you're in close, I doubt any of them are going to help you with that. If you're out farther away, either one of these have a fighting chance, in my opinion. But what we're going to do now, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you back for part two, and we're going to crack into these. We're going to bust them open. We're going to show you what's inside, and uh, yeah, see what they're all made of, and see if we can find any difference in the in the uh, EMP shield versus the midnight, or if it's just in a box and potted versus you know midnight's being out in the open. Um, this is going to be pretty typical of any of the other surge arresters on the market. Not necessarily the, the you know, the mechanical design of it, but the interior components are going to be pretty typical of what you'd see of a, uh, 
you know, any of the square D or, or a Cytel or anything. So I'm really curious to see what's inside one of these. So anyways, hopefully, you know, that was a little bit interesting and hopefully I've enticed you to come back and watch part two because we're getting ready to do that right now and we're going to crack these open and show you what's inside.